test crash or Testing. Can you hear me? Is it good? I lost it. Okay. Can you hear me? Is that good? Is that good? Is that better? Okay. Make it. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 
Okay, happy Father's Day to everybody this morning. I'm glad you all could make it. Um, wanted to welcome anybody who is new here today. So if anybody brought someone new, I'll start because I have some family members here from Ohio. My brother Mason and his wife Laura and Liberty and Landon. Yay! <laughs> Does anybody else have anyone new here? Okay. Well, you guys are the unicorns today. <laughs> um, do we have any um, announcements today? Just to let everybody know, you're like family. But as of July 1st, I'll be moving. I'm going to Oakwood United Methodist Church in Elmira Heights in Beaver Dams. We've been through a lot through the seven years I've been here. Don't be too rough on Jeff here with DS. He'll find you a pastor. Hopefully it'll work for you. But Pat and I have been called to a different church, two different churches. And these churches have not had a pastor for two years. So we've got a challenge on our hands as we go because the one church was huge but they're small now and they're trying to build them back up and they haven't had one for two years and um, we got picked but I just want you to know that you are family and that we will keep you in our prayers and I'll be checking out the UMC support but I must let you know that I can't respond to anything for a year. But you can go to my Facebook and I can respond there. <laughs> but UMC support, I cannot. But I want to thank you all for being our family. Anybody else have any announcements? God has called us to a vacation Bible school ministry and um, directed us to make disciples. So if you have not yet committed to helping in some way, um, stop by the table in the narthex after worship and talk to Trina and I about how you can be in prayer, how you can support the Vacation Bible School ministry, which starts July 17th. Um, there will be a video playing in the fellowship hall to give you an idea um, what this theme is all about. Food truck party. And there's lots of energy and lots of joy with that um, theme. Um, we are looking for small tables with one or two chairs, like you might find on a patio or in a coffee shop. Um, because that will help us with our decorating. Um, please don't bring them right away. Storage here is a little bit of an issue, but be thinking if you have any small tables with one or two chairs, because that will help us immensely with our decorating. Now, before VBS starts, we're having a chalking event up here in the parking lot, and there are flyers in the narthex, and we um, invite you to um, um, to take a few around to the community and there's a list of places that you might take them and lastly there's prayer partner meeting tomorrow um, two o'clock here um, come and join us if you can we'll pray geographically around the building and we have a short um, study um, 
Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I just want to thank everybody for the great support for the spaghetti dinner. It was a good turnout, and it was great fellowship by all. Um, there is some extra um, sauce, um, homemade sauce, not homemade sauce, but sauce that has been cooked, jars of sauce, and spaghetti, and bread, and salad, that if you would like it, you can make a donation or whatever. Um, and on July 11th, going off what Cheryl said, I'm going to be doing a safe sanctuary training. So um, anybody that is involved in Sunday school, um, leadership, or vacation Bible school, club can do, any of that, um, and you haven't had the training, that will be a July 11th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. I just want to thank everyone who either donated um, ingredients, donated money, came to eat pancakes, helped wash dishes, uh, all the things that go into having a dinner. Uh, it was successful. We made, I believe, around, I guess Dottie's not here, but I'm thinking around $300 we cleared. Oh, it was? Okay, my husband's telling me $450 we cleared. Uh, and that was because of donations and so on. It was all, all profit. I think the only thing we bought were some napkins. I don't know, everything was, no, everything was, yes, everything was donated. When I remember it, because I had some cash donations that I was able to just go and purchase the odds and ends that we did need. Uh, so there no, no bills were turned in. But thank you, everyone. Uh, and uh, thank you for coming to eat pancakes or whatever you did to help. Extra, extra, your upper room is out there on the cart. You want to grab it up today before they disappear. July and August, there shouldn't be a single one left there when uh, Fourth of July comes along. Also, uh, we uh, we were being a little bit stingy with these because we wanted to make sure we had enough for all the men as they uh, came through the door. But there's extra, so please, if you have someone at home that you'd like to uh, give them. Uh, there's a, a thing in here that needs to be eaten soon. So, uh, and, uh, so anyways, uh, at the door or in that basket, please take one home. Take a couple home uh, to someone else in your family or a neighbor or whatever, just to wish them a happy Father's Day and happy Milka. Okay, any other announcements? How about joys and concerns? <coughs> It was suggested to me by wonderful caregiver support that I get out and enjoy the sunshine yesterday. And hallelujah, what a day the Lord provided. And Bobby was so inspired. Uh, he walked along like there was nothing wrong with him. And when I mentioned that we were almost home and did he want to take a nap on the couch, he ran up the steps on the porch ahead of me. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Excellent. Any other joys and concerns? Just have a joy. I was able to be at the Art Court Methodist Church this morning. I got to hear my daughter preach, so it was a blessing. Thank you. Hey, nice. <clears throat> Anyone else? Well, that was short this morning, guys. Very good. Only praises. Okay, so shall we pray? Thank you, Lord. Days like this are, are wonderful. You are the almighty overseer of everything that happens in our lives. And it's so wonderful to hear people having joys. And I'm very excited there was no concerns this morning. That's excellent. I know there's surely some that are unspoken. Um, and we ask you to be with those people that need you for their unspoken concerns. And, and you know what they need and you will care for them. And thank you for the praises. Thank you for the lovely weather that we're allowed to go out and enjoy and, and be able to see your beauty in the world. And we pray all of this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
please join me in the opening hymn. Please join me in the call to worship. Our relationships with our fathers are complicated. For some of us, our father's love is like God's To lead, to belong, to provide, to be strong and measure. Some of our dads are here, and some never were. All of us are shaped by the relationship or lack of relationship with our fathers. On this day, when we remember what it means to have a father or be a father, we recognize the importance of fathers and in our communities. We pledge as a congregation to love and nurture the fathers among us. Please join me in the unison prayer. Loving God, you are our Father.
to your own will. So now everyone greet one another in Christ's name. As everybody returns to their seat, we're going to get ready for our children's message brought to us today by Claudia. And I so will, all you guys can come up. Are the children right going to come up? And I want the teenagers. Right the right come on. Come on. Come on. It won't hurt you. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. You can. Well, who's a child at heart? Who's a, who's a teenager at heart? Don't I have some teen? Do I have some? Huh? Yeah, I may have something for you today. You never know. You never know. You don't want to miss out. Oh, pastor's here. I'm going to, I, yeah, well, we want, I, we want to, oh, I, I know. I just told him, I just, oh, that was tough news. And then try to do children's church or children's message was hard. And Mr. Teenager that won't come up here, that's okay. I don't, I don't bite. <laughs> Just for Father's Day. Okay. Our, no, that's okay. That's okay. We'll carry on without them. We'll, we'll just carry on. Well, today is Father's Day, and fathers are special to God, you know? Um, and everybody has a father, whether your father lives with you or not. I was a single mom for about 10 years, and my daughters, I have three daughters now, married and grown, and I'm a grandma, and I'm waiting on my great-grandbaby. So we've got lots of family, lots of kids, and, uh, and for those lean years without their dad, I used to get a Father's Day card. 
and my girls would giggle, and the, but they meant, Mom, thanks for being Dad and Mom. Some of us have to do that, and we have to fill in. Some of us r grew up with our grandfathers, and some grew up with uncles or another man that was a father figure to you. And so today we want to remember to whoever that father figure is to you, maybe you don't have a dad, but you do, because our Heavenly Father can be your, your daddy. My mom told me, and she's, she's still with us, my dad's, he graduated, he's with our Heavenly Father. And, but my mom, she told me, she said, when she accepted Jesus in her heart, God became her, became her daddy. She goes, I had a daddy. I, first time I felt a father's love. And he can do that for you too if you haven't accepted Jesus into your heart. And it's so easy, but today is Father's Day. And you know, even the Bible says it's the fifth commandment to honor your father and your, and your mother. We can turn that around for Mother's Day, too. Yeah, in Exodus. And I, I have to pull my paper, 20, Exodus 20, 22, honor your father and your mother. And you know what it says in Deuteronomy? I'm going to read this because it's really important. Deuteronomy 5, 16 in the Amplified says, honor, respect, obey, care for your father, and it says your mom too, and mother, as the Lord your God has commanded you so that your days on earth may be prolonged and that it may go well with you in the land which the Lord God gives you. And that means if you honor, respect, and love your daddies, whoever that dad is in your life and your heavenly father, your days, you'll have a long life. If you want to live to be an old man, then honor your father and your mother. You, have to you can't forget moms, right? If your mom is your dad figure in your life, then you have to honor mom. But honor your heavenly father. And that it's so, just praise him. Say, good morning, Father God. Thank you for this beautiful day. Don't forget about him. He should be right there when you wake up, when you eat your food, when you see the sunshine, right? When you see the beautiful sky. Thank God, and thank you for our fathers. And I just thought that if anybody wanted to give their dad or their grandpa or their uncle or whoever that father figure is to you a Father's Day card, I was going to let you take one home. Would any, and I have three, and I like dogs, and so I have doggy cards. It, would anybody like to take a Father's Day card to their dad? Well, come on, and you can pick out... Just come on up here and pick out. I've got three different kinds. Take whatever you want. Come on. You, gotta come. you have to look at them. Find one that you like. Anybody wants a Father's Day card for someone special in their life? You can come get a card. Don't you want a card? Do you like dogs? Do you have a dog? You want a doggy card to take to your dad? What about this? Would you like that for your dad? You could take one. I've got, you're there. So this one says, Happy Father's Day. And it has all the little, we love you, Dad. And that one's your, your one of a kind. You're a one of a kind, Dad. So anyhow, that's my message for today. Don't forget to honor Father God, your heavenly Father, and your earthly Father, whoever that is. Because daddy, daddies are special. I had, a, I had a good dad. He was a really good dad. I'm, and, and so I'm hoping for a very long life. And I'm getting there. So, <laughs> And I'm not giving up. We don't get, my mother is 91. That was, she, she's honored Heavenly Father. We say she's going to live at least 100 and beyond if she wants to. So that's my goal. And, 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 and I still have to honor my dad. And I honor his memory. And, uh, and so that's it. Well, I have cards. I still have cards left. Anybody wants a Father's Day card? My guys are not church members. You want to take them in case anybody changes their mind? Sure. And then, all right.
I'll be right back. Mike. Thank you. Where's Dave? Oh, howdy. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Co <laughs> co coordination. <laughs> Okay, so please join us in our next hymn. If you're willing and able, please stand. Join us now for the offering.
Thank you, Lord, for these blessings and donations to our church. Please help us to use them in the most meaningful way to grow your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first reading this morning is found in the book of Hebrews, and I invite you to turn there with me. Um, Chapter 12, we're going to begin with verse 5. And you have forgotten that word of encouragement that addresses you as sons. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of our spirits and live? Our fathers disciplined us for a little while, as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second reading from the book of Malachi. We are um, in chapter 4, and we are reading verse number 6. I'll give you a minute, because I always have trouble finding Malachi. Even though it's the last book of the Old Testament, it's still hard to find. Verse 6. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, or else I will come and strike the land with a curse. This, too, is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cheryl, thank you. So, did you guys know that the word Father appears in the King, New, uh, King James Version of the Bible 627 times. 627. And, you know, that's, that probably means that it's pretty important to understand what it is to be a father. And I, I feel it's a very difficult job. Um, God, as we know, is both our father and our mother. And he has imparted into each of us separately, men and women, different duties, per se. Um, It's a father's job, in general, uh, to be disciplinary, to raise his children in a godly manner. And most fathers, you know, they, they do their very best at that. But none of us parents, men or women, are perfect. None of us are. Um, Proverbs 3, 11 through 12 says... My son does not despise the Lord's discipline and do not repent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he does delight in. So their job is the bad guy sometimes, right? It's the one to discipline and make sure that he tells you what to do and how to behave and all of that. And um, it's a difficult job because it's hard to balance it in a way that you do it in a loving way, but stern enough to make sure that the point is across and that your children are raised to be respectful, good Christian adult people. Um, and when God trusts a man with children, when he puts children in your life, like you said earlier, 
it's not always your own biological children. Sometimes there's stepchildren. Sometimes it's the neighbor's kid that just looks up to you. Sometimes it's a kid in your church. It could be just somebody you work with that's a younger person. Um, when he puts one of those people in your hands to be a father figure to, it is the most, or at least one of the most important projects of your life. And for all you men out there, don't you love projects? You all do. You love projects. But this one is a really important, important project. Um, and the reason why it's so important is many times, young men and women will decide who and what they think God is based on their earthly father. They'll decide if they want anything to do with God or not to do with God based on what they experience with their fathers. That's, that's rough. Because um, no father on earth nor mother is perfect. And no mother or father is going to be able to be God's perfect example. But it does happen that children will look up to their fathers to see what it's to be a father. And then they will look at the Heavenly Father when they learn of the Heavenly Father and just kind of assume that it's the same. And there are a lot of differences. Um, with fathers growing up, you know, some of us, like you said earlier, Claudia, some of us had fathers that were never there. Some of us had fathers that were there but traveled all the time and you rarely saw them. Some of us had fathers that were very stern, verbally, physically, potentially, um, just very rough. Um, some are very, very critical. Other fathers, they can smother you with wanting your attention all the time, and they try to relive their lives through you. So it goes both ends of the spectrum. But I believe most fathers really try their best. They try their best because they love their children, and they want their children to grow up right. And the discipline, no matter how it's doled out, positive or negative or some mixture of it, is because they're trying to form those children to be good, godly adults as they grow. Um, even even as uh, you watch when uh, Jesus was first entering the scene as something other than a carpenter, uh, it says in Matthew's, Matthew 3, 16 through 17, this is my son who I love, and with him I am well pleased. Most fathers are well pleased in their children, but they don't always feel it, because it's harder for men to express that. Women are all lovey-dovey, huggy, kissy, you know, I'm so, you're so special, you're so wonderful. But men have a harder time with that because men are men. God made you that way. They made you a strong, sturdy figure, an example of strength. And sometimes people with great strength have trouble being all smushy. <laughs> and they, show, they tell their kids they love them. I love you. I'm proud of you. But it's harder to, to have a child feel that to actually feel it, to know it in their soul beyond question. And that's what God does for all of us. Anyone who has accepted Christ as their Savior, they feel it in their heart. They may not feel they deserve it, but they know that God loves them unconditionally, fully and completely. And that's what most of us lack in Fathers on Earth because it's so difficult to do that. It is a God job to do that. But men do try. And there's such power in a father's praise. Um, it's, it's just, it's unbelievable to be able to show your softer side, to be able to show the compassion you have for your ch children. Um, you know, just show them how meaningful they are to you. Psalm 103, 13 says, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Now, I don't know about all of you, but when I did something wrong, I'm telling you what, I feared my dad. He did not beat me. I did not have that kind of a childhood, although I know many have. But I, I feared it. I was like, mm. mom would say, wait till your father gets home. And I was like, pucker pinch, scared, shake, go hide somewhere. Because I knew I was going to get it. He was going to tell me. And I knew I had done wrong. But it's the same way that God tells us we've done something wrong. It doesn't mean that your father or your heavenly father doesn't love you or approve of you or love you unconditionally. It just means they're trying to straighten you out into a good, well-rounded Christian adult. And compassion and love is what children so desperately need from their dads. You know, we always look to the moms to give that. 
but the fathers are the ones that really set the tone for how a person perceives themselves growing up. It's so important that children feel that from their father, that they feel that they're, they're desperately loved, they're approved of, they can feel their father's compassion. They know that even if they wrap that tree around a truck, their dad's still gonna love them. And that's tough, because you know your dad's gonna have some words with you first, right? But that's how God treats us too. And men do get that right. It's just harder for them to show the compassion side. In 1 Thessalonians 2, 12, there are three main action words in that scripture. And these talk about how a man is to raise their children by encouraging, by comforting, and by urging. So when you think about this, men out there, think about how do you motivate your kids? How do you motivate them? Do you do it with shame? Do you do it with silence? Maybe giving them love only when they perform or withdrawing your love when they don't? By never letting them know where they stand? That's not what God calls men to do. God calls men to show their children the right way with a discipline that is absolutely required to raise a child correctly. But you also need to build that child up. And those things that you do really build a child. That, and, and when you do the other, the silence or the showing love only when they do the right thing, um, you know, withdrawing your love or giving them a silent treatment if they're not behaving the way you want to, that dismantles a child. That brings a child apart. And it's, sometimes it's, it's easier to do that because you don't want to yell at them and say the wrong thing, but that silence can be just as painful as just yelling at them and having it done. And what does God do to us? Does he yell at us or does he have compassion? When you come to him with, Lord, I just wrapped your truck around a tree. I just broke your favorite what's it that you keep on the shelf. You know, he doesn't just give us a silent treatment. He lets us know, hey, man, you did something wrong. It's not good, you know, but thank you for coming to me, being honest with me, bringing that, that wrong to me. And now I will... Forgive you for that, and I will love you. And that's really, it's very challenging. Even as a mom, it's hard to do. But men are more called to the disciplinary side, and it's so, it leaves you with two ends of the spectrum that are really different, and sometimes it's hard to mesh it together. But those kids, you know, they really need to hear your praise, and they need to hear it frequently. Even if it's just silly stuff like, thanks, Morgan, you finally picked your socks up from your room for three weeks. <laughs> or, hey, Ben, Thanks, man. I came home and the dishes were done, and that's great. Now I can just go in and make dinner. You hear that stuff from mommies all the time. But do you hear it from dads? No, because it's a chore and it's expected to be done. And that is the absolute truth. There's nothing wrong with that. That is the absolute truth. But men need to step it up a little and use the words because it's so important for kids to see that the things that they do right are approved of they're seen and they're noticed by the one they look up to most in the world as kids, their dad. He's the boss man, just God is the boss man. And we all look up to him to say, God, have I done right by you? Forgive me for things I haven't. Do you approve of me? Do you still love me? We all do that, and children do that to their dads. So dads, please, make sure you're telling them the good things they do. It's so important. It, it so changes and forms their hearts. It's so important for them. They need your attention. They need you to really focus on them. They want to just talk to you about nonsensical robots and dolls and tea parties and things like that. And you don't care at all about that. And nobody cares that you don't care. But if you listen to that child, they feel so loved. They feel that they're important. My daddy's listening to me just because I'm talking, because he loves me for who I am and he's interested in me and what I have to say. Don't we all long for that from God? It's the same thing with our earthly fathers. And you know, God, he values us and he loves us so much. And as small children, that's what we look to for our fathers before we've learned the love of God. Um, they need to have compliments too. They need to know that they bring you pleasure and that you're proud of them and that the things that they do in this world are noticed and important to you. Unconditional love for children 
it's real hard to do in the moment of a bad situation. But you know, as parents, you always have unconditional love for your children. You get mad at them, but God gets mad at us too. So you can give your kids these little words and these little affirmations and these little motions to show them their love. And that's how you're going to build your kids. You're going to build them to have the courage that they're need to, going to need to go out in this world and be leaders, good Christian leaders, good leaders at their school, good leaders at their workplaces. It helps them to have the courage to have that strength, knowing that they are perfect just as God made them. And yes, they'll make mistakes, but they, they know that they're still loved. Um, they'll, they'll be able to say no to pressures more easily because they'll feel more whole in who they are as a person because they know their fathers and their heavenly fathers approve of them just as they are. They'll be able to attempt great things and to treat other people like those other people are important because they'll see that modeled by their father. Did I lose a battery? Oh. <laughs> their fathers are going to show them that, you know, you make mistakes, I still love you, you're grounded for two weeks, but we're still good. And they can treat their sons and daughters with kindness. Even though they've done wrong, they pay their, they pay their penance, right? Even God the Father launched his son with this kind of strength in a very public way. You know, we say a lot of things in the home, and I love you, but to show your pride in your children outside of the home, that's even better. It feels so rich. Those kids feel approved of in front of their friends or in front of their schoolmates or in the church. It's really, really important. And for those who really need to see who a father is, keep this scripture in mind. Matthew 23, 9. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he is in heaven. So yes, small children need to look to their fathers and their mothers, but fathers a lot for discipline and for, for shaping and molding. Um, but as they grow older, they become one of us adults. And we all have to know that as we look to the father, we don't look just at our dad to fulfill all of our needs to feel whole or loved or perfect exactly how we're made. We don't need to look just to our earthly father for forgiveness and for shaping and molding. We can look to our Heavenly Father. None of our fathers are perfect. All fathers try, well, most of them. Um, but to be able to know that growing up, you might have looked at God as this disciplinary, and I haven't done anything wrong, and how could he love me, and I'm not what he's supposed to be. I've read the scriptures, and I know that I do this, this, and that, and the other thing that's not right. He can't possibly love me, or he's aloof like my father. My father, personally, was on business trips quite a lot. That didn't mean he didn't love me. He just wasn't there because he was trying to do the best he could to make money so that our family could be comfortable and that us kids could have everything we needed. But he wasn't there a lot of the time. I have a void from that. And as an adult, I've learned it's not his fault. He did everything he could to provide his family with everything he could. Did I miss out on something? Sure I did. And I'm sure lots of you have similar stories of different things where there were voids in your, in your lives from a father that either didn't spend enough time with you or didn't tell you as a woman you were beautiful or didn't tell you as a man that you did a great job on that project. But that's why we have a heavenly father to go to. And he not only is our father, he's our mother. So you can get all those touchy-feely, lovey feelings from God. You can get your discipline from God and your direction and your guidance. And you men out there, just do your best to be our earthly gods to those children because you are the first father they ever know and the first father they ever have a chance to model. And that is a really important job, and I applaud you all for taking that job on. It's not an easy one. So... Let's close with a prayer. Heavenly Father, the one who knit us all together in our mother's wombs, who made us all exactly the way you wanted us to be and gave us all the fathers that we were meant to have. Thank you so much for the fathers we had in our lives, whether they were our actual fathers, stepfathers, uncles, just friends of the family that figured as a father, 
thank you for those men that helped to build us. And we're okay with the things that they weren't able to build in us because they're human. Thank you for being there as their backup. <laughs> you are the ultimate, all loving, all compassionate, and forever caring God who is our father above all things and our mother too. We can come to you with anything. And we ask you, Lord, to come to all of us today and every day of our futures and let us know that you're holding us in your arms like your child and that you love us like your child so that we can go out into this world and be better fathers and be better mothers and be good to the other people out there so they can feel the same love that you give us. And this we pray in your holy son Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, would you like to join me in the closing hymn, please? quick announcement that we didn't do next week is graduation celebration for our graduating seniors and what was the other thing you asked me to announce confirmation confirmation as well cookies for the and coffee, cookies and coffee also anyone else <laughs> okay so guys I just want you to go today uh, with the love of the Lord in your heart and know that all of you fathers out there, you're doing good. You're doing good. And we all appreciate you. Do you need... I just want to mention one thing. Everybody... Yes. <laughs> like that, uh, this light is always hung back here. And hardly anybody ever looked up there and saw us. Yep. All right, guys, so everybody just go with the love of the Lord in your heart. Know he is your perfect father and that he will always watch over you and he will be the best father you ever had if you just let him in your heart to lead your life. Have a great week.